everybody, welcome back. So let's dive into this situation with the Lakers. They haven't been playing well, or they didn't live up to expectations. LeBron also, you know, he said he was going to turn it on in the last couple of, you know, last part of the season and it didn't come to a fruition. And now it's everyone's looking at that franchise. And I guess the first person to blame, as always, is a coach. Yeah. So now let's look at Luke Walton's situation. What do you think about Luke Walton right now? Well, this, I think this is his last season with the Lakers in terms of uh, just, they just have to rebuild and restructure their franchise because when Magic Johnson came in, uh, Luke Walton was already signed for um, as a coaching job, and I think Magic Johnson's going to basically flush out the whole organization and, and, and build from here on from this coming off season. And I'm pretty sure this is like Coach <laughs> Walton's last stand with the Lakers, even though he has a good relationship with Genie Bus. And... Uh, there's a lot of potential coaches too, and, and it has to be someone of LeBron's. It mm -hmm. has to be someone either LeBron respects or let LeBron would listen to. Let's pass it on mm -hmm. to Mark. What did you think mm -hmm. about Luke Walton? Do you think it was his fault? And I guess, like also Mark mentioned, there's there's other p potential candidates. Well, you know, yeah, I do think it is his fault because at the end of the day, he is the head coach and he is leading them. But I can't, I can't really say it's all his fault because at the start of the season, the Lakers are doing good, but then LeBron got injured, Ingram, Lonzo, they all, they all got struck with injuries. And then, I don't know, I guess from there, he had trouble sailing the ship. But yeah, going back to what you said, LeBron doesn't really, he doesn't really rate him that much. So mm -hmm. um, it's questionable. I don't, I don't think he stays. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And who are the, or what's in the air with the potential coaches that could fill in that spot? Mm -hmm. I mean, you gotta go with uh, with a if they want to see if it's a proven system. Someone that has coached LeBron before or has won a championship, Ty Luke could be coming in, in someone's mind because of the fact that he has that relationship with LeBron, he has a good relationship with him in a sense of he knows how to kind of coach a team that have won a championship with LeBron, right? So that's proven. Uh, I like Mark Jackson too, they just gave him another chance because the, the things that he did with the Warriors before they turned things around, he was the one that really had the franchise going uh, from a semi-contender team in the playoffs to like a legit championship team before he was let go and, and Steve Kerr was in there. So Mark Jackson comes into my mind just because of the fact that what he did with the Warriors. Uh, Jason Kidd maybe in there too, just because of the fact that he has that relationship with LeBron. LeBron has his respect. You have to have a coach that really has your superstars um, good intention and good relationship because mm -hmm. LeBron is going to be dictating that whole team. And if, if you're not on LeBron's side, you're going to have conflict between how LeBron wants to play and how the coaches want to play. And who would your choice be and why would you think that's no, the best I agree with option? What, what Mark was saying about yeah. Ty Lue because the, he has coached him before and then they do have that relationship where they can get kind of like yell at each other, get in each other's backs, but at, at the end of the day, they both know that they're st they still have the same goal. And yeah, with other coaches, yeah, Jason Kidd, sure, but I don't think the relationship is as strong with Ty Lue. And, you know, Jason Kidd's going to do some antics, like spilling a drink on the court and other things <laughs> like awesome. that. Yeah, but so that's the, smart. <laughs> yeah, I think Ty Lue's the best candidate just because his experience with LeBron and they have a trust with each other. Mm -hmm. yeah. Seems like LeBron just gets his way anywhere, anywhere he goes, honestly. Yeah. And if, if Ty Lue goes to the Lakers, it's funny because Ty Lue was with the Lakers yeah. when, you know... Iverson they, stepped over. Yeah, <laughs> the Iverson, the <laughs> iconic Iverson step over. Let's talk about Lakers and the offseason. How about the free agent market? Or what do you think? They obviously wanted Anthony Davis. It's probably not looking good for them. Mm -hmm. But what do you think, what kind of moves will the Lakers make this offseason? So. Well, obviously LeBron hasn't, this is the first year when, like, since like 2005 that he's missed the playoffs. So he's obviously pretty ticked off. So I think he's going to do some heavy recruiting in the offseason. And yeah, there's definitely a lot of big names in the market this summer. So like honestly the world the world's lebron's because lebron's still the best player on the planet mm -hmm. so a lot of people aren't going to pass up the opportunity and especially to play in a city like la too with like the history of it and the fans and you get to live in la so mm -hmm. i know I, I saw a funny instagram post where he's even recruiting for space jam too right the top three ages are in your on the top of your mind that you think lakers will try to get uh, this is me playing i kind of deducing it in terms of where most of the players are going into i mm -hmm. i think Kyrie and, and KD has a really strong chance of going to uh, to the Knicks, and I think that Clay is probably going to stay with the Warriors, and I think that um, most likely 
Kawhi is either going to be with the with the uh, Clippers or with the War uh, with mm. us with the Raptors. Mm. That's a very strong chance in terms of how they how he's viewing things right now. So that eliminates a lot of the players that could potentially be in the market. That leaves players like Jimmy Butler, Tobias Harris, DeMarcus Cousins, mm -hmm. and Kevin Walker. So I think they have a really good chance of landing a player like Jimmy Butler just because. Jimmy Butler has that dog in him, and I think he he ride, he has the same mindset as LeBron. Like, hey, he wants to be around players that wants to win and has you know, has experience. Mm -hmm. And he you've seen him having troubles with playing with uh, young players who doesn't have the mindset or the drive that he has. And he wants to, he wants it to step up to the level that he has in competitiveness. And I think he's gonna get that with LeBron. So if he doesn't get success, if he doesn't have a very successful postseason with the Sixers, I, I see most likely leaving. And, and Lakers is a potential spot for him and LeBron to be that. Uh, one and two. That's a really good. Uh, that's a really good team. And I also look at someone like Kemba Walker. Like if they don't have a good season coming up, he's stuck. He's kind of in the middle ground where every for the past few seasons he's, they've just been a uh, like an average team. And I think he needs to be in a, in, in, in a team in a, with a player like LeBron who can really flirt, like make him even a better player because LeBron's going to be a better facilitator for him. He doesn't have to carry the load like he's doing right now with Hornets. So. Jimmy and Kemba would be a very good player to kind of surround LeBron with two-way players or a player like that can really score the bucket. Mm. And mm. do you agree with those picks, or do you have another pick in your mind that might might come to the Lakers? Honestly, I think Kemba's a good one, especially because Charlotte right now they're fighting for a playoff spot. So I think depending on how if Charlotte makes the playoffs or if they don't, and how well they do. You know, Kemp has got a lot of thinking because obviously if he stays in Charlotte, he'll still be the guy, but he won't be winning much. Mm -hmm. And then if he goes to the Lakers, then he has a higher chance of winning because he gets to play with LeBron. And yeah, I think Kemp was probably the guy for me, if I were to say, to pick one to go to the Lakers. Mm -hmm. I like the, the Butler one the, mm -hmm. that you said because, yeah, you can see Butler's frustration when, when he's with the, the Sixers, and mm -hmm. I feel that would be the, the best in terms of like mentality and the grit, okay. like you said, yeah. but also you can't. I don't know. I kind of want to see cut. Like yeah. if they get a player like yeah. Tobias Harris, that's yeah. not so bad either. But it's not going to put them anywhere closer to a championship or even playoffs. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Like because their young core is still very young and immature. Yeah. And you see how they were affected by trade rumors. They literally played awful the second half of the season, and Lonzo didn't even come in and, and just were injured the whole time. I mean, Kuzma, Ingram, they traded Zubak, like a really nice player, and they traded it to the Clippers, who's literally making the most out of him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. An interesting so. one you said is DeMarcus, too. If DeMarcus mm -hmm. went to the Lakers, that would be an interesting one, too, because mm -hmm. no one would kind of want to touch DeMarcus, because DeMarcus is also still trying to prove himself, too, mm -hmm. so his value might be mm -hmm. pretty good, too, right? Mm 